Hello Grade Tens, today we're going over one of my favourite sections, exponents. Now the reason why it's one of my favourite sections is because exponents generally do look quite difficult, but that's just it, they just look difficult. If you know all of your other knowledge of algebra, then you'll be fine. Let's revise quickly what you should know from Grade 8 and Grade 9. Now what I'm drawing over here is something called a power. The whole thing is called the power. The 5 at the top is actually what the exponent is, and then the base is the a. It's important to know what each of these things are called when you're talking about um, exponents. Let's go to the first page. There are two focuses on this lesson. Uh, we're going to focus on how to use exponents and then how to do exponential equations. If you know the laws of exponents that we cover in the first section, then you'll be fine with the equations. You've just got to master those skills first. Let's go on to the first examples. There are several laws that we can use to make working with exponential numbers easier. Some of the laws might have been done in earlier grades, but we list all the laws here for EFC reference. Here, of course, we have a to the power of n times by a to the power of n. When you multiply bases that are the same together, you add the exponents. In other words, if I had a to the power of 2 times by a to the power of 3, it would give me a to the power of 2 plus 3 is 5. S very similar law for when dividing. If you're dividing two bases that are the same, you minus the exponents from each other. In other words, if I had a to the power of 2 divided by a to the power of 3, I would get an answer of a to the power of 2 minus 3, which is a to the negative 1. Now remember, when you have exponents that are negative numbers, you can move them to either the numerator or the denominator because wherever they are, they aren't happy there. If it is in the numerator, you move it down to the denominator and the negative will fall away. Let's show you how this is done. So a to the negative 1 becomes 1 over a to the power of 1. Let's move on. a times b in brackets to the power of n the n is multiplied by both of the exponents on the inside of the bracket. Now I'm going to change this a little and turn it into a to the power of 2, b to the power of 7, to the power of 4. This means that the 4 is going to multiply by the 2 and I'm going to have a to the power of 8. And the 4 will multiply by the 7 giving me b to the power of 28. Another law of exponent, very similar. You've got your fraction inside the bracket. You must remember that the exponent on the outside raises both of the exponents on the inside. Now, the exponent being on the outside of the bracket just means that you're going to raise the exponents on the inside of the bracket. And we call it something different so that you remember that it's a different skill. When you multiply bases that are the same together, you add the exponents together. But when you have an exponent on the outside of the bracket, you're going to raise all the exponents on the inside of the bracket by multiplying those exponents by those. Let's move on to the next one. OK, very similar over here to this example up here. a to the power of m. To the power of n, we're raising the exponent, so it becomes a to the power of m times n. Now, there is one thing here that's not mentioned, and that is what if we have something to the power of 0? Anything to the power of 0 is equals to 1. Absolutely anything. Even minus 562 to the power of 0 gives us 1. 
Now let's do something slightly different. What we're going to do is take away those brackets around minus 562 and see what happens. I'll show you first on the calculator. Now in the original example, we have minus 562 to the power of 0, and that gives us 1. Let's try it without the brackets. Minus 562 to the power of 0 is equals to negative 1. The reason this happens is because the negative actually forms another number. So you've got negative 1 times by 562, and that's the whole number. If I make it negative 562 to the power of 0 without the brackets, I've got negative 1 times by 562 to the power of 0, so only the 562 is to the power of 0. Let's move on to some example questions. Okay, simplifying exponents. Changing the bases to products of their prime factors. Let's deal with this quickly. In grade eight, you probably did something called the ladder method. Now the ladder method is when you take a really big number and you find the product of its prime factors by dividing it by only prime factors. It is possible to do this on a calculator, but let's quickly practice doing it just how we did it in grade eight. We'll start with the number 72. Just over here quickly, 72, what is a prime number that goes into 72? 2. Always go for the easiest ones first rather than making life difficult for yourself. Now 36 times 2 equals 72. What can 36 be divided by? Once again, I'm going with 2. It's easy to see. 36 divided by 2 gives us 18. 18 then divided by 2 gives us 9. 2 does not go into 9, but 3 does, giving us 3, and 3 divided by 3 gives us 1. Okay, so our final answer is 1. In order to get 72, what we're going to have to do is multiply 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. In other words, 72 is equals to 2 to the power of 3 times by 3 to the power of 2. Let's show you how to do this on your calculator. Now it's only some calculators that let you do this. You start by pressing 72 and you press equals. Now the reason you press equals is because you can only use shift and fact once you have got the 72 down there. What you see is 72 is equals to 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 2. Let's try that with a slightly higher number like 112 is equals to shift fact 2 to the power of 4 times by 7, all products of prime factors. The reason we find products of prime factors is so that we can use the prime factors when working with exponents. It's much easier to have all of our bases the same and then work with the exponents than to do the opposite, try and work with these huge numbers. It just doesn't work. Make your life easier, find the products of their prime factors. Let's move on to this question. Well, what we have is a two, and that's great. That's a prime factor. We have a four, which is not a prime factor. Four is actually two to the power of two. Two squared gives us four. So 4 to the power of n is actually 2 to the power of 2 to the power of n. 2 is a prime factor. 16 is not a prime factor. And let's do it on the calculator just to show you. 16 equals and a product of its prime factors 2 to the power of 4. This is something you should know off by heart, 16 being 2 to the power of 4. Well, what you'll see is this is done over here. Change the bases to prime numbers, and we've done that. And now what we're going to do is multiply them out. 2 times n gives us 2n. 4 times n gives us 4n. That means that that number over there is going to become 2 to the power of 2n, and this one at the bottom will become 2 to the power of 4n. 
Now you'll notice that I haven't tackled the other bases so far because they're already prime factors and for the moment I'm focusing on what I can do. That's a trick with life. You always do what you can do and then the moment you're done with that you'll find that the things you couldn't do to begin with will fall into place. The same thing happens in mathematics. Let's go and see what happens next. Okay, now what they've done is they've skipped a step over here, which is good to do when you've got more practice. I'm going to slip the step in between, 2 to the power of 2n, and we've done the building blocks above, 2 to the power of 2n, times by 2 to the power of 1, over 2 to the power of 4n. The next thing we need to do is, because all the bases are the same, is to add the exponents that are on the top together, and the ones that are on the bottom together. You'll notice that I'm working with the top and bottom separately. That's a strategy I use with doing exponential equations, always working with top first, doing as much as I can before integrating it with the denominator. So they've taken 2n plus 2n, there it is. So that 2n goes over there, that one over there, and the one over there. We've done nothing with the denominator. We're now going to add 2n plus 2n plus 1 gives us 4n plus 1 over 4n. Okay, we've changed everything to products of their prime factors and then worked with bases that are the same. We've worked just with the numerator to get it as simplified as possible and if we had more to do with the denominator we would have completed that as well. Now that we've done as much as we can in the numerator and in the denominator, we're then going to integrate the two and see what happens. Let's move on. And you'll see, because it's in the denominator, it is then subtracted. Now there are many people in this world who see themselves too intelligent to use brackets. People who don't use brackets generally get the question wrong. It's a really good idea to treat yourself as someone who is a beginner. So a negative multiplied by 4n gives us 2 to the power of 4n plus 1 minus 4n. And of course we have like terms here. 4n minus 4n will give us nothing. So we've just got 2 to the power of 1, which is of course the same as 2. Now that we've completed the first example, let's move on to the next one. Simplifying exponents, factorizing, taking out a common factor. Now, how do we know that we need to factorize? It's very easy to spot. If there is ever a minus or a plus, it means we have two terms. And the laws of exponents only apply if we have one term. In other words, if our bases are being multiplied together or divided together. So if we have two terms, we need to apply different rules. And that is when you should have big warning bells saying factorize. So whenever you see more than one term, you need to factorize. It takes a little bit of practice to get to know how to factorize because you can do a difference of two squares. You can even do a sum and difference of two cubes. And this is taking out a common factor. How do I know that? Because I've got 2 to the power of t over here and 2 to the power of t over there. So I know that if I change it to become 2 to the power of t minus 2 to the power of t times by 2 to the power of negative 2, it's far easier to see my common factors. And you'll see at the bottom we've also got two terms. And what's our common factor again? 2 to the power of t. Just to make it more obvious, I'm going to circle it in pink. There is no shame in circling, in coloring in any maths papers. I highly recommend it. It makes it far easier to see how to take out a common factor. Now, what they've done over here is exactly the same thing. I didn't use brackets, but they have. And then you are going to take out your common factor. So you've got 2 to the power of t and 2 to the power of t. When you take them out, you're going to have 2 to the power of t, and what's left of this term? Well, most people would say nothing. That's actually incorrect. We do have a 1 in the place of it. If I'm talking to my classes, I'll say that it's the tombstone in remembrance of what was there. 
it's far easier to see what's left of the second term. We put the minus in, and 2 to the power of t times by 2 to the negative 2, what's left of the second term is 2 to the power of negative 2. At the bottom, the same thing, they've taken out 2 to the power of t, there it is, and there it is again. What's left of the first term? Just 3. And left of the second term, it's our tombstone. We can then cancel our common factors, and the reason we can do that is because now we have one term. We have something times by something, and yes, there's a minus inside the brackets, but because the brackets are there, it counts as one number. So we've got one number times another number giving us one term. They cancelled out, and then you'll see that they've changed it to fractions. The reason they've changed it into fractions is because fractions are actually easier to work with. 2 to the power of negative 2 is the same as saying 1 over 2 to the power of positive 2. And what is 2 to the power of positive 2? A quarter. So that quarter is how that one got there. 1 minus a quarter, and 3 minus 1 gives us 2. Now that means we've got 3 over 2 divided by 2. And you'll see that they've jumped straight to the answer. It's much easier to do it on your calculator, but sometimes calculators aren't always around. So let's look at how we do it without a calculator. We have 3 over 4 divided by 2. Do we like to divide fractions? The answer is no. If possible, we're going to change it to a multiply. And it's always possible. Even when it's a whole number, it's going to be a whole number over 1. So in order to change the divide to a multiply, we change it and we put the denominator into the numerator and the numerator into the denominator. Now remember, multiplying fractions is very much like hugging your friend. You're going to both be standing when you hug, so your heads are going to collide and your feet are going to collide. In the same way, when you multiply fractions, you multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. Don't get muddled up with all sorts of other things. Just multiply top with top, bottom with bottom. Let's do that. 3 times 1 gives us 3, and 4 times 2 gives us 8. And that's how we get 3 over 8. Let's move on to the next question. Now, in this one, they've given us a clue again, factorizing, and it's going to be a difference of two squares. If I were to look at this in a test or an exam, my initial response would probably be of panic. That's why you must always do what you can do first, and then let the rest take care of itself. Now, our first step is always to find products of its prime factors. So let's start by making 9 into 3 squared. To the power of x minus 1. At the bottom, 3 to the power of x. There's not much we can do there. OK, when you see this kind of thing happening, you can do a number of different things. 3 to the power of 2 raised to the power of x is also 3 to the power of 2x. But it can also be written as 3 to the power of x to the power of 2. Now, if we have any squared number minus any other squared number, we know we're going to do a difference of two squares. But it's a lot easier to see when it's something like x squared minus 1. When it's 3 to the power of x squared, it doesn't look as easy. But that's all it is. It just looks difficult. It just isn't actually difficult. So this is actually a difference of two squares. And you'll see 3 to the power of x squared minus 1 becomes 3 to the power of x minus 1 and 3 to the power of x plus 1. So the squared has fallen away, and you've got your plus and your minus. And what do you notice then? Now that you've done what you can, you find something else that you can do. You can cancel off 3 to the power of x plus 1 with 3 to the power of x plus 1. And you're left with your answer of 3 to the power of x minus 1. The trick with these questions is to always just do what you can. Everything else will fall into place. And if it doesn't, at least you've got some marks for doing what you can. Let's move on to the next question. 
Okay, simplifying exponents. Simplifying rational exponents, fractions, without the use of a calculator. For some reason, many people panic when they see fractions. This is not something you must do. You must just relax, follow the rules that you've been taught, and make sure you know the rules. Don't get them muddled up with funny phrases and things like that. Just go step by step and you'll see it always works out. You're always going to get questions that do work out in the end. Let's look at some of these exponents with fractions. Now the first one has two difficult things about it. It's got a 3 as a numerical coefficient and it's got the fractions 1 over 4 and 7 over 4. Now you can see that 1 over 4 and 7 over 4 are actually going to fit together quite nicely. But this 3 is going to throw a lot of people. So what I'm going to do is first rewrite it as t to the power of 1 over 4 times by 3 times by t to the power of 7 over 4. Because that's all that the 3 is doing, is multiplying the t 7 over 4. When we have bases that are the same, we can add the exponents, so 3 times by t to the power of 1 over 4 plus 7 over 4. When you add fractions, you've got to make sure you have a lowest common denominator, which we do have, and then you add the numerators, which gives us t to the power of 8 over 4. 8 divided by 4 is also 2, so not so scary. Moving on to example 2. Now example 2 is a little intimidating because of the decimal point over there. All you need to do is just change it to a fraction. And remember fractions are our friends. We can work with them a lot better. 25 is also 5 squared and you should know that off by heart. And 100 is also 10 squared which makes it a lot easier to deal with because now what we're going to do is multiply the exponents on the inside of the bracket with the exponents on the outside of the bracket. Now I'm going to do it in a slightly different method to what you see over here so that you have the benefit of both explanations. What I'm going to do is actually multiply the exponent in first rather than taking this exponent out. So I'm now going to say I've got 5 squared at the top to the power of a half and in the denominator I've got 10 squared to the power of half. And what do we do when we're raising exponents? We multiply them by each other. Multiplying fractions, 2 times a half is like hugging your friend. You've got to multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So 2 times 1 gives us 2 and 1 times 2 gives us 2 which gives us an answer of 1. Which means instead of 5 squared 5 squared to the power of half, we now have 5 to the power of 1. Instead of 10 squared to the power of half, we now have 10 to the power of 1. And that's a lot easier to simplify. 5 over 10 is actually 1 over 2. We're going to take a bit of a break right now, so get up, go and drink some water, relax, and get ready to do some questions. We have some interesting plans for the next section. See you just now. Welcome back grade tens. Let's get on to some real work now. We're going to do a couple of questions that practice all of these skills that we've learned before. Let's start with the first one. Now what we have here is 5 to the power of 2x plus y times by 5 to the power of 3 in brackets x plus z. Our bases are the same so the next step would be to deal with this exponent that's over there. I'm only going to deal with one thing at a time because that's the way we do maths. Okay, so 5 to the power of 3 times x becomes 3x, and 3 times z becomes 3z. Now that our bases are the same and our exponents are as simplified as possible, let's add the exponents together. Now, it's good practice to put it in brackets, and because this is the first question we're doing together, let's do that where we put the plus between it, 3x plus 3z. Now when that uh, this plus is multiplied in, 
we'll find that everything stays the same. So we have 5 to the power of 2x plus y plus 3x plus 3z. Our only like terms are 2x and 3x, meaning our answer is going to be 5 to the power of 2 plus 3 is 5x. No like terms for y, so we just write down y and we've got 3z. Let's move on to the next question. Now this is an interesting question because we've got b to the power of k plus 1 in brackets with the k outside. Another way this question could be presented is b to the power of k with k plus 1 on the outside of the brackets. Both will give us the same answer. Which one are you more likely to get in a test? Probably the second version because they want to check that you can remember all the rules. So let's do the first version first. We're, we're going to multiply the k on the outside of the brackets with all of the exponents on the inside of the brackets, giving us b to the power of k squared plus k. Yes, it's possible to have a k squared in our exponent. It's not something we do often, but it's good to know for skills-wise. Over here, where people are going to get stuck is they're going to remember to multiply the k by the k, but then they're going to forget to multiply the k by the 1. And you do need to do both. If you don't do both, you won't get your full marks. So b to the power of k times k gives us k squared and k times 1 gives us k. There we go. Let's move on. The next one, we've got bases that aren't the same. So we've got 6 at the top and 9 at the bottom. So our first step is going to, chain, is going to be to change 6 to 2 times 3 to the power of 5p and at the bottom 9 to 3 squared to the power of p. Our next step is to multiply in those exponents by the exponents that are on the outside. Just because there is no exponent shown for 2 doesn't mean that 2 doesn't have the exponent of 1. And 3 also has the exponent of 1. So don't forget to multiply those. 2 to the power of 5 and 5p times by 3 to the power of 5p over 3 to the power of 2p. Now we've simplified the bottom and the top as much as we can. Let's now integrate them, see what we can do. Because the 3's are the same, we're able to work with those exponents, but 2 to the power of 5p, there's nothing we can do. So let's start by writing down 2 to the power of 5p, and we leave it as it is, times by 3 to the power of 5p minus 2p. Now once again, it's good practice to have those brackets in. Just because if there are terms, two terms coming up, then you can multiply the negative into the brackets properly. Because there's only one term, it's not really necessary, but is good practice. Okay, we can't do anything with 2 to the power of 5p, so we're just going to rewrite it. And we can do something with the exponents of 3. 5p minus 2p gives us an answer of 3p. So our final answer is 2 to the power of 5p times by 3 to the power of 3p. It is possible to do more at this stage, but not necessary. For instance, we could take out p and put it on the outside of the brackets, but it doesn't make a difference to our answer, so we're not going to do it. The next step, or the next question. Question 4 says m to the power of negative 2t times by 3 in brackets 3 m to the power of t to the power of 3. They're wanting to test two skills here. They're wanting to test that you can work with negative exponents and that you can remember how to raise everything by the power of something. They also want to test your anxiety levels, see if you can cope with seeing something that looks slightly different. Don't let them trick you. 
just approach it calmly, and you can do it. Let's see how we do it. First thing I'm going to do is deal with these brackets. Remember, if you don't do bod mass, you don't pass. Now, it is possible to move m to the power of negative 2t to the denominator, and then multiply it out accordingly. My experience tells me that it will be easier to multiply bases that are the same than to divide them. So I'm going to leave m as a numerator for now. And I'm going to start by just rewriting it and doing what I can with the others. Remember, Bodmas asks us to do brackets first. So let's start with the brackets. 3 times by 1. Where is the 1, I hear you ask? There it is over there. So 3 times by 1 gives us 3 to the power of 3. And 3 times by t gives us m to the power of 3t. Now that we've got bases that are the same, let's add the exponents. So we have 3 to the power of 3, and I put it in the front just for convention's sake, times by m to the power of negative 2t plus 3t. And what is negative 2 plus 3? It's going to give me an answer of 3 to the power of 3, m to the power of t. Now you'll notice I haven't rewritten the time sign. That's because it's assumed that it is, is there already. When you write a number next to a letter, it's like you are saying 3 times m. Or in this case, 3 to the power of 3 times by m to the power of t. And that's our answer for there. The next question has a fraction in it, which of course will make some of you panic. It also then has a negative exponent, which will induce another round of panicking. So let's deal with things one step at a time. Firstly, we're going to deal with those brackets down there. At the top, I'm pretty happy for now, so let's leave it. So the top is left as 3 times x to the power of negative 3. And at the bottom, we now have 2 times 1, and remember that 1 is the exponent of 3. So we have 3 squared, and 2 times 1, and that 1 is for the exponent of 10. So we now have x squared. Well, now that we've simplified the numerator and the denominator as much as we can, I'm going to bring them both together by adding or subtracting at least the exponents. So I have 3 to the power of 1 at the top minus I've got 3 to the power of 2 at the bottom. And that's where that 2 comes from. Times by, I've got x to the negative 3 at the top minus, and I've got 2 at the bottom. Remember, if you want to be absolutely correct, you put the brackets in there. But because it's one term, it's OK to leave them out. It's just a wise move to have them in. 1 minus 2 gives us an answer of negative 1. And minus 3 minus 2 gives us an answer of negative 5. So what we have here is 3 to the power of negative 1 and x to the power of negative 5. If the question had asked for us to have it in positive exponents, we would have to then change these exponents to a positive by moving them to the denominator. How do I know I must move them to the denominator? Because at the moment they are in the numerator, so they must go to the denominator. If all of my numbers move to the denominator, it means 1 is left in its place. Remember the tombstone? That's the tombstone. Now at the bottom we have 3 to the power of 1 and x to the power of 5. Do you need to have that 1 over there? No, you don't. You could have written just 3 times x to the power of 5. Both of them are acceptable, and both of them will be liked by you and your maths teacher. Let's move on to the next page of questions. Now, as we move on, these questions are going to become more difficult, and you're going to require more skills. Take notes on what I say and learn how to do them, because all questions are pretty much the same in tests. So if you can do these questions, you'll be able to tackle your test questions. Let's move on to the next part. OK, in this question, we've got the number 3, the number 9, and the number 27. Now, none of these bases are the same. So the first thing we're going to do is change to products of their prime factors. 
Remember that 9 is the same as 3 squared and you should know that off by heart but if you don't use your calculator or recalculate it using the ladder method. 27 you should also know off by heart as 3 cubed. Let's tackle this now armed with this knowledge. So 3 to the power of n stays 3 to the power of n. 9 now becomes 3 squared and we've got n minus 3 at the top. At the bottom we now have 3 cubed to the power of n minus 1. The skills they're trying to test here is that you can raise to the power and that you're going to remember to multiply the 2 by the n as well as by the negative 3. If you don't multiply by both of them, you won't get the answer right. You'll go wrong right in the beginning, which is not good for anyone. 3 to the power of n, there's still not much we can do with it, so we're just doing what we can do. 3 to the power of 2 times by n gives us 3 to the power of 2n, and 2 times by negative 3 gives us negative 6. At the bottom, the same skill applies. 3 times n gives us 3n, and 3 times negative 1 gives us negative 3. We haven't completely finished simplifying. Let's start by adding the exponents on the top, and then we'll bring up the bottom to subtract. So n plus 2n is going to give us 3 to the power of 3n and remember the reason we can do this is because the bases are the same. Minus 6 and now I'm going to do two steps in one where I'm going to bring this exponent up to the top and subtract it from the top. So minus 3n minus 3. I put the brackets in this time because it is good practice, number one. And number two, when you multiply out the negative, you will remember to multiply the 3n by the negative and the negative 3. This will give us 3 to the power of 3n minus 6 minus 3n plus 3. Can you see how that makes a big difference? To multiply the negative by the negative, you're going to get plus 3. 3n minus 3n gives us nothing. So now we have minus 6 plus 3, which is negative 3. And because it's a negative, we're just going to change it to a positive by moving it to the denominator where it becomes 1 over 3 cubed. The final answer, if you wanted to write it out, would be 1 over 27. There are often questions about when do we change it to a fraction and when do we do the negative exponents, positive exponents, or even change it from 3 cubed to 27 or not. The general thought is, if you can do it without a calculator, then do it. If you require a calculator to do that part of the question, then it's probably not necessary. Of course, if the question asks for all exponents to be positive, you do need to change them all to positive if they do end up being negative. Let's move on to the next question. The next question, question number seven, has a bracket, it has a fraction, and it has an exponent on the outside of the bracket. We've got numbers and we've got variables and we've got positive exponents and negative exponents all within. It's a good variety of everything altogether. Let's change color just for fun. So, We've got brackets, so the first thing we need to do is deal with the brackets. Why? Because bot mass tells us to. The way we deal with the brackets is this exponent has to be applied to both the top and the bottom. I'm going to write the in-between step, just so that you can see how we get to that. And the in-between step is we rewrite the numerator and the denominator in their own separate brackets uh, to the power of 3. And then it's easier to see how we're going to multiply in. Now remember that 2 has a power of 1. So don't forget to multiply that 3 by the power of 1 over there and the 3 by the 2a. This 3 at the bottom multiplies by the negative b. Let's write the next step out in full. 
it is possible to then skip from that from this first step up here or the question up here straight to this step over here where we write 2 to the power of 3 x to the power of 6a over y to the power of negative 3b. Have we simplified the top as much as possible? Yes, we have. Have we simplified the bottom as much as possible? Yes, we have. The last step is going to be to change this from a negative exponent to a positive exponent. And the way we do that is it's at the denominator. We're going to move it to the numerator where it is happier and it's going to change to a positive exponent. And because I can do 2 to the power of 3 in my head, I'm just going to write that out as 8. Then we've got x to the power of 6a and finally y to the power of 3b. If you don't like such big gaps left between the variables, you can put a little multiply sign over there, but it's not necessary. That's all we can do for this question. Question 8 is a really good example of what you're going to find in tests and exams. We've got three, the four different numbers here. We have a 6, 11, 22 and 3. 11 and 3 are both prime factors, but 6 and 22 both need to be changed into products of their prime factors. So let's start in a different color and we'll change 6 to 2 times 3. Now you can either do a dot for times or you can do the time sign. I'm going to change it to a times because sometimes a dot is mistaken for a decimal point. We then have to the power of 2x times by, is there anything we can do with 11? No, so we're going to keep it as 11 to the power of 2x. And then at the bottom, 22 is actually 2 times 11. Can you see where this is going? We've got a 2 at the top, a 2 at the bottom. We're going to have an 11 at the top and 11 at the bottom. It's going to work out nicely for us. 2x minus 1 is the exponent that was given to us. And then we've got times 3. And there we go, 3 at the top, 3 at the bottom. So everything's matching up quite nicely. But before we start dealing with top and bottom, let's simplify them separately. 2 to the power of 2x is what it now becomes. Why? Because I've got to multiply or raise the exponent of 2 by 2x. So it becomes 2 to the power of 2x times by 3 to the power of 2x times by 11 to the power of 2x. At the bottom, I've got 2 to the power of 2x minus 1 times by 11 to the power of 2x minus 1 times by 3 to the power of 2x. Now I know some of you are already going to see that 3 to the power of 2x can cancel with 3 to the power of 2x. You can do that. I'm going to carry on with the method that I've been using up to this point, which is I've simplified the top and I've simplified the bottom. Now I'm going to bring the exponents from the bottom up to the top by subtracting them from the top and deal with what happens then. So I have 2 to the power of 2x at the top and I'm going to minus 2x minus 1 from it. So that comes from the bottom. Then I have 3 to the power of 2x minus 2x from the bottom. And you'll notice I haven't put brackets around it, but it is a good idea if you're feeling unconfident to keep them around. I put brackets around the first one because there are two terms. And the last term or the last number is going to be 11 to the power of 2x minus, and I'm using brackets because there are two terms, 2x minus 1. Let's multiply that out and simplify it. 2 to the power of 2x minus 2x plus 1. Now 3 to the power of 2x minus 2x gives us 3 to the power of 0, which is 1. So I'm just going to write times 1 over here. And then next to it, 11 to the power of 2x minus 
2x plus 1. Okay, 2x minus 2x is nothing. So now I'm left with 2 to the power of 1 times by 1 times by 2x minus 2x gives us nothing. Plus 1 means I've got 11 to the power of 1. 2 times 1 times 11 gives me the answer of 22. And that's our answer. Number 9 is a favorite question to be asked in tests and exams. Usually when you're asked it though, they'll say x to the power of negative 1 plus y to the power of negative 1 in brackets to the power of negative 1, and it can get confusing. Apply your rules from fractions to work it out. If you're not having success with exponents and factorizing, change it to a fraction. Let's start with this question. Okay, let's do question nine in a different color just so that it's clear which is separate. Now what gives us the clue that it is different from all of the other ones is that our bases are not the same and there's no chance of them ever being the same. Don't waste time trying to change them. What I'm going to do then is change them to a fraction. So rather than three to the negative one, I'm going to make it one over three. And two to the negative one, I'm going to make one over two. If I want to add fractions, I need to find a lowest common denominator. Now the lowest common denominator over here is going to be six. How did I get six? Well, three goes into six and two goes into six. It's a cheating way to get it is to say three times two, which is six. How do I change one over three to something over six? Three times two gives us six. So one times two will be 2 over 6. This is called an equivalent fraction. Next to it, to change 2 to 6, I've got to multiply it by 3. So the numerator, I've got to multiply by 3, and it becomes 3 over 6 to the power of negative 1. Now that our denominators are the same, we can add the numerators, giving us 5 over 6 to the negative 1. Because we are raising the power on the outside of the brackets, that power applies separately to both the inside, uh, both the numerator and the denominator. So that actually becomes 5 to the power of negative 1 over 6 to the power of negative 1. 5 is not happy where it is, 6 is not happy where it is, so both of them are going to move. The 6 is going to come to the top where it becomes 6 to the power of 1. The 5 is going to go to the bottom where it becomes 5 to the power of 1. Now, a confusing problem can be made easy by just tackling it step by step. Just do everything as you can do it and you'll find everything else sorts itself out. Let's go on to the next question. Question 10. Now, question 10 should immediately be ringing warning bells. Why? Because we have two terms. How do I know we have two terms? We have a plus in the middle. So we have 3 to the power of t plus 3 plus 3 to the power of t. What a plus or a minus means is that we're going to factorize. Remember? Factorize. Okay. Our cho choices for factorizing are to find a common factor to do a difference of two squares, or to do a trinomial. We could also do a difference of two cubes, so a trinomial, and then we have our sum or difference of two cubes. So those are our options. And you should always start at the top of the list and then go down choosing which one you're going to do. So let's see first if we have a common factor. 3 to the power of t plus 3 plus 3 to the power of t. Yes, we have a common factor, although it's probably a little bit difficult to recognize right now. Let's change this to 3 to the power of t times by 3 to the power of 3 plus 3 to the power of t. Do we need to factorize at the bottom? No, there's only one term. The plus and the minus divides the terms up. So I'm going to leave the bottom for now as 2 times 3 to the power of t. 
Let's start by highlighting the common factors. There it is, 3 to the power of t and 3 to the power of t. And now let's take them out. So we've got 3 to the power of t and what are we left with of the first term? We're left with 3 to the power of 3. This is what I love about highlighting is that it's so much easier to see what's left of the first term because you've highlighted what needs to be taken out. And of the second term, which is that, what is left? I know some of you are still thinking nothing, but remember when you think there's nothing left, we put a tombstone in remembrance and there it is. So we've got 3 to the power of 3 plus 1 in brackets and 3 to the power of t. What we've done is we've changed it into one term, which means that we can now do some cancelling if we need to, which we do. 3 to the power of t can cancel with 3 to the power of t at the bottom. And now we can use uh, what we know already, that 3 to the power of 3 is actually 27 plus 1 over 2, which gives us 28 over 2, which is 14. Most of your exponential work you should be able to do on paper, not necessarily in your head, but be able to get it right as you're doing it on the paper. If you need to use your calculator, it probably means you've gone wrong somewhere or you just haven't done enough practice. There is no substitute for practice in mathematics. If you want to get above 30%, you need to practice a lot. You must do all your homework, you must listen to your teacher, and you must get the work done. Let's go on to the next questions. Now once again, this question should be ringing warning bells because of the plus in the numerator and in the denominator. And what does a plus mean? It means you have two terms. And that, of course, means you need to factorize. What were the four different things you could do? You could do uh, taking out a common factor. You could do a difference of two squares. You could do a trinomial. Or you could do a sum or difference of two cubes. This one's a little bit more difficult to interpret because we have 2 to the power of 3p plus 1 and 2 to the power of p plus 1. Now, if we had a common factor, then there would be 2 to the power of p on this side or something like that, but that hasn't happened. If we had a difference of two squares, then one of these would be a minus, and that hasn't happened either. With a trinomial, it implies 3. You do need three terms, so that hasn't happened either. So by process of elimination, this is going to be a sum of two cubes. How do I know it's a sum of two cubes? Because there's a plus and because 2 to the power of 3p can also be written as 2 to the power of p to the power of 3. So what we have is 2 to the power of p to the power of 3 plus 1, which then means we can do a sum of two cubes, which gives us 2 to the power of p plus 1, and in brackets, 2 to the power of 2p minus 2p and 2 to the power of p plus 1. And this is all over 2 to the power of p plus 1. And as you can see, this cancels out very nicely. 2 to the power of p plus 1 cancels with 2 to the power of p plus 1, leaving us with a final answer of 2 to the power of 2p minus 2 to the power of p plus 1. That question is quite a difficult question. It's unlikely to be in tests and exams, but it is something that you need to know so that if you do see it, you can do it. Make sure that you can recognize what type of factorizing goes with which kinds of exponents. Let's move on to the next question. OK, question 12 has once again got a minus and a minus. This means we're going to be factorizing both the top and the bottom separately. Now, by process of elimination, the first thing we should look for are common factors. At the top, we have 3 to the power of x and 3 to the power of x. So the top can do taking out a common factor. At the bottom, we also have 3 to the power of x and a 3 to the power of x, so we can do that at the bottom as well. Now I'm going to show you something I call Christmas decorations, just so that you can be aware of it when you're doing it. There are some people 
who will be lazy and so they won't want to rewrite it as 3 to the power of x times by 3 to the power of 1. They're going to just want to take out the common factor immediately of 3 to the power of x. But then they get confused and they're left with this little one hanging around. Now I like to call that a Christmas decoration. They've taken out 3 to the power of x and they're left with 1 hanging around but they don't know what to put there. You need to put the 3 over there and then it is correct. So if you are going to skip a step, make sure you're not left with any Christmas decorations. The next side, we've got 3 to the power of x, we're taking it out as a common factor and we're left with 1. At the bottom, 3 to the power of x is a common factor again. Let's write it in front of the brackets. And in the brackets, 3 to the power of x plus 2 divided by 3 to the power of x doesn't leave us with 2. Remember that's a Christmas decoration. We actually have to have the 3 in front of it. So 3 squared minus 2. Where does that 2 come from? From the other side or the other term. It was minus 2 times 3 to the power of x. We took out 3 to the power of x as a common factor and we were left with minus 2. Well, that works out very nicely for us because 3 to the power of x cancels. And now we've got in brackets 3 minus 1, which is 2. And at the bottom, 9 minus 2, which is 7. Now you should be able to see that if we just do what we can do, step by step, things fall into place. So remember, when you see something that you don't know what to do with, don't panic. Just tackle what you can do, and you'll find the rest just comes afterwards. Let's go to the next question. Now question 13. Question 13 has a plus and it has a plus. So let's go through the different types of factorizing. The first type is to take out a common factor. We have 2 to the power of x at the top and 2 to the power of x, which means we can take out a common factor over there. It also works on the bottom. So let's do that. I'm going to do the short method again and remind you to watch out for Christmas decorations. There's the Christmas decoration. What do I do with it? I put the 2 in front of it. Because 2 to the power of x plus 1 is the same as 2 to the power of x times by 2 to the power of 1. Now let's do the other side. We're taking out a common factor of 2 to the power of x and we're left with minus 3. But remember, in order for it to not be a Christmas decoration, you've got to put the minus 3. I mean the 2. In order for it not to be a Christmas decoration, you've got to have the 2 in front of it. Let's go to the bottom, where we decided that our common factor was going to be 2 to the power of x. And we are left with the minus 3 in the exponent, but we need to have the base attached to it as well. So 2 to the negative 3. And then, of course, 2 to the power of x, if we take it out over here, we're left with nothing but the tombstone. You must remember to put the 1. It does change your answer if you don't put it there. 2 to the power of x cancels with 2 to the power of x, and we're left with 2 plus, and what is 2 to the negative 3? It's 1 over 2 to the power of 3. And at the bottom, you've got 2 to the power of negative 3, which is 1 over 2 to the power of 3 plus 1. Let's make that one longer. Okay, am I finished? No, I'm not. I've got to still work out what's going on over there. So let's start with the top. I'm going to put it all in one line. So my numerator is going to be in brackets, and I've got 2 plus 1 over 8 divided by 1 over 8 plus 1. How do I add them? Well, I've got to have the denominators the same, which means that I've got 16 over 8 plus 1 over 8 divided by 1 over 8 plus 8 over 8. Remember, if you don't do bot mass, you don't pass. So you must finish what's in the brackets first before moving on to the divide. OK. Now that we've got the common denominators the same, we now can add the numerators. And for that reason, I'm going to let the brackets fall away. 
So 17 over 8 divided by 9 over 8. Do we like to divide by fractions? No, we don't. So let's change it to a multiply. And we'll put the numerator in the denominator and the denominator in the numerator for the second fraction. Now what's nice about this fraction is that when you are multiplying fractions by fractions, you need to multiply top with top and bottom with bottom. But if you can, you can cancel before you do that. And in this case, we can. 8 can cancel with 8, leaving us with an answer of 17 over 9. How did I get that? Well, 17 times by 1 is going to give us 17. And 1 times by 9 gives us 9. Now that we've finished with exponential expressions, we're going to move on to the equations. But before we do that, it's important you have a little break and feel relaxed and ready to cope with the next section. Exponential equations are fun, and we will see you just now. Welcome back. Let's get back to work. Now, we were going to start with exponential equations. There's a very, very mathematical explanation to this, and I'm going to put it into layman's terms. Basically, whatever you are not looking for, you need to get those the same. So let's say your variable is in the exponent. So you're not looking for the base, you're looking for the exponent. That means your bases must be the same. If your variable was in the base, then your exponents you would have to get the same. Let's start with some example questions. Okay, the first question says 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equals to 9. Now the first thing we've got to do is change 9 to be 3 to the power of 2. So 3 to the power of 2 is equals to 9. Why do we do that? Because the variable is in the exponent and we need to therefore get the bases the same. So you'll see that this has been done in the next step. 9 has now become 3 to the power of 2 and we've got 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equals to 3 to the power of 2. Now because the bases are the same we can therefore make a logical deduction that the exponents are going to be equal to the same amount. For that reason, we can drop the bases and just say that x plus 1 is equals to 2 and then solve for x accordingly. Remember that the step in between is you're getting rid of that 1 by subtracting both sides, by subtracting it from both sides, and you get a final answer of x is equals to 1. Let's try the next question. Solve for t where t is in the exponent. So what do we need to get to be the same? We need the bases to be the same. This looks a little impossible, but we can solve it by doing step by step. The first thing I'm going to do is recognize that there is a plus. And the plus means we're going to have to factorize. There are different things we can do with the factorizing. We can take out a common factor as a first thing. Difference of two squares, trinomials, or some difference of two cubes. Over here, we have 5 to the power of t and 5 to the power of t. So we're going to start by taking out a common factor, which they have done in the step over here. Now I'm going to re rewrite this in a way that looks more pretty to me. I'm going to write it as 5 to the power of t plus 3 times by 5 to the power of t times by 5 to the power of 1. How did I get that? Well, t 5 to the power of t plus 1 is actually 5 to the power of t times by 5 to the power of 1. It's now a lot easier to see where our common factors are and as a result easier to take them out. So when we take them out in the next step it's easier to see what's left again. Because we've removed 5 to the power of t, we've got to put a tombstone in its place. And over here, 3 times 5 gives us 15. Now it's still all equal to 400. We haven't done anything to that 400. So the 400 still remains. How do we get rid of that 16 over there? And why do we want to get rid of the 16? We want to get rid of the 16 because we need 5 to the power of t isolated. 
Because the 16 is multiplying the 5 to the power of t, when we get rid of it, we've got to divide both sides by 16. 400 divided by 16 is going to give us an answer of 25, which is, of course, 5 squared. And that's how we get that over there. Now that the bases are the same, we can therefore deduce that the exponents are going to be equal to the same amount. So therefore, t is equals to 2. Let's go on to the next example. OK, the next question is the most difficult of all of them because it involves trinomials and exponents, and it gets rather confusing. So let's look at how we're going to deal with it. The first thing that gives us a clue that we're doing trinomials is the fact that there are three terms and that it's already equals to zero. The next thing we need to point out is that p to the power of one can also be p to the power of half that has been squared. Now this over here is a typing error, that's what it should be up there. If we know then that p is actually the squared version of p to the power of half, we can do the trinomial using normal trinomial methods. First thing we're going to do is replace p with p to the power of half to the power of 2 and then factorize the trinomial as we would usually do. So I'm going to use this method by saying p to the power of half and p to the power of half are my two factors of p. And then 36, I'm going to give them the factors 4 and 9. p to the power of half times by 9 gives us 9 times p to the power of half. And 4 times by p to the power of half gives us 4 times p to the power of half. If we add these two together, we're going to get an answer of 13 p to the power of half. Is that what our middle term is over there? No, it isn't. Our middle term is negative 13 p to the power of half, which means we need to somehow change these factors over here, the 4 and the 9. Well, 4 times 9 gives us 36, but we also know that negative 4 times negative 9 gives us positive 36 as well. And if it is negative 9 times p to the power of half, we're going to get negative 9 p to the power of half. And the same with the negative 4, giving us an answer of negative 13. So this will, in fact, work, which means that our factors for our trinomial are going to be p to the power of half minus 4 and p to the power of half minus 9, which they've done for us in the next step. The last step is to then divide your problem up into the two parts and to solve for each part individually. So p to the power of half minus 9 is equals to 0. Let's start with that. In order to solve for p, we first got to isolate it by taking 9 to the other side. We do this by adding 9 to both sides. p to the power of half is equals to 9. Now we're not looking for p to the power of half, we're actually looking for what p is equals to. So what we're going to do is square both sides because p to the power of half squared gives us p to the power of 1. If we've squared the one side, we need to square the other side, meaning that p is equals to 81. Let's do the other side. p to the power of half minus 4, we want p to be isolated, so we turn it into p to the power of half is equals to 4. And once again, we're not looking for p to the power of half, we want p. So we're going to square both sides, giving us p is equals to 60. Now that we've done different levels of difficulties in our examples, let's move on to some questions. You'll see that these questions are more easy and they're more likely to be what you'll find in tests and exams, but it's a good idea to know both the difficult and the easy questions in case. Let's move on. Okay, the first question asks us to find x if 3 to the power of x is equals to 1 over 27. Now, x is in the exponent, which means we need to get the bases to be the same. We don't like 20, 1 over 27. It's not products of its prime factors, and it's a fraction. Let's start by changing it so that 27 is in the numerator. And the way we do this is that 27 has now acquired a negative 1. Now, 27 is not a product of its prime factors, and you should know off by heart that 27 is actually 3 to the power of 3 
which is then raised to the power of negative 1, giving us 3 to the power of x is equals to 3 to the power of negative 3. Now that our bases are the same, we can logically deduce that x is equals to negative 3. So we'd put a little therefore to show that we're using our logic and we say x is equals to negative 3. Let's just show you in a different color quickly what I'm talking about. Because the bases are the same, it means that the exponents are obviously equal to each other. So x is going to equal negative 3. Let's move on to the next question. Now what I like about the next question is that the bases aren't the same and it's drawing on that uh, rule we learned in the beginning where anything to the power of 0 is equals to 1. Whenever you see a 1, you know you're going to have to change it to something to the power of 0. And what are you going to have to change it to? Well, because our unknown is in the exponent, we need our bases to be the same. So we're going to change it so that our base is now 5 on the other side. And it becomes 5 to the power of 0. Now, because our bases are the same, we can logically assume that our exponents are going to be equal to each other. So let's make them equal to each other. We put a little therefore in to show that we know what we're doing. t minus 1 is equals to 0, giving us an answer of t is equals to 1. Not so bad. The last question for this page is 2 times 7 to the power of 3x is equals to 98. We're going to start by getting rid of the 2 because we want the 7 to be on its own. It's the one with the unknown. The unknown is in the exponent, which means we need to get the bases to be the same. The way we get rid of the 2 is we divide both sides by 2, leaving us with 7 to the power of 3x is equals to 98 divided by 2. And what is 98 divided by 2? If you are uncertain, use your calculator. Let's practice using it. 98 divided by 2 gives us an answer of 49. Why is 49 going to make you happy? Well, you know 49 is actually 7 squared. And what have we done then? We've made our bases the same, meaning that our exponents are automatically equal to each other. So 3x is going to equal 2. Remember to put the therefore in to show that you know what you're talking about. So because the bases are the same, our exponents are going to be equal to each other, meaning that x is equals to 2 over 3. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, the next question throws in one of those things that are confusing, and that is a decimal. So we're going to start by changing that decimal to a fraction. 2 to the power of m plus 1 I'm going to leave as it is for now and change 0, 0,5 to 1 over 2. And I'm still raised to the power of m minus 2. Now it is possible for me to multiply those or raise the exponents on the inside of the bracket to those. But what I'm going to do is make it more simple for myself and bring the 2 to the numerator where it becomes 2 to the negative 1. So I now have 2 to the power of m plus 1 is equals to 2 to the power of negative 1 raised to the power of m minus 2. The next step then is to multiply that out. And I've got 2 to the power of m plus 1 is equals to 2 to the power of negative m plus 2. And remember that your teachers are trying to test that you can multiply both the m by negative 1 and that you'll remember to multiply the negative 2 by negative 1, giving you positive 2. Uh, now, our bases are now the same, which means, therefore, our exponents are the same. So m plus 1 is going to be the same as negative m plus 2. We're now going to use the skills that we usually use with the equations that you've been doing since grade 8 by bringing the m's together 
and all of the numbers to the other side. And we're left with 2m is equals to 1, which of course means that m is equals to a half. Question 5 is different. What makes question 5 different is once again the plus in the middle. This implies that we're going to have to do some factorizing. So let's go through the list. Is there a common factor? Well, there may be an m in both terms, but they have different exponents, and it's not going to work to take it out. So no, we can't do a common factor. Is there a difference of two squares? There's no minus, so no difference of two squares. Are there three terms so that you can do a trinomial? No, there aren't. Are there two cubes that are being added or subtracted? No, they aren't. So we can't factorize that. This. That means we're going to have to use a different skill. I'm going to start by changing m to the power of 0 to 1. And then change the other one to m 1 over m is equals to 0. So basically what I've done is as much as I can do at this point. I've done what I can see. Now I know that I'm adding fractions, so I'm going to find the lowest common denominator, and that's going to be m, which means I have m over m plus 1 over m is equals to 0. Because our denominators are the same, and because it is an equation, we can drop the denominators the whole way along. Basically, mathematically, what we've done is we've multiplied both sides by m, and for that reason, the, equation, the denominator has disappeared. So now what we have is m plus 1 is equals to 0, which is far easier to solve for because m is equals to negative 1. The last question. Question 6 has three terms on the one side. Now, usually I would say that we're going to factorize it. But in this case, 27 is on the other side of the equals. And if we're going to solve an equation, that requires factorizing, it needs to be equals to 0. So that's not going to work here. You've got 3 to the power of p plus 3 to the power of p plus 3 to the power of p. That means we've got 3 times 3 to the power of p is equals to 27. We want to isolate 3 to the power of p, and we're going to do that by dividing both sides by 3, giving us 3 to the power of p is equals to 27 divided by 3 is 9. Can we solve this equation as it is? Not right now, but we can change 9 to 3 to the power of 2, which of course means our bases are the same, meaning that logically our exponents are going to be equal. Therefore, p is equals to 2. Great tens, we've come to the end of the questions. Remember, do what you can see first. Everything else will take care of itself. Once you've done the small things, the big things will become small things and you'll be able to finish the question. There is no substitute for practice in mathematics, so if you're struggling, do more examples until you're not struggling anymore. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye, grade 10s.